Do you find that uh, being uh, multilingual, speaking all these languages, doing some of your set in, in a number of these languages uh, gives you a certain amount of leeway when it comes to talking about other cultures? Like it allows you to say certain things that maybe like, say me getting up on stage who doesn't speak these other languages. If I kneeled down, it was like, you look like the happiest Iraqi I've ever seen. Like people might be like, whoa, whoa, dude. Well, it depends how you say it. If you say it like that, it's not going to go well. Whoa, white privilege yeah, guy, back right? down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if it's if it comes from, from I think, a place of, uh, you know, for me, I, I would not say it that way. <laughs> for You'd the purpose to, of this conversation. Yeah, it'd have to be a way lighter way to say it, you know. It has to be less Republican, a little more. Yelling it yeah. aggressively in his face. <laughs> yeah, so for me, it was it's always been growing up in a multicultural uh, environment. I grew up in one of the most multicultural neighborhoods in Canada, went to the most multicultural high school uh, in Canada. And just having all these cultures with me and growing up in my developmental years, um, you know, it makes it so that when I do uh, comedy, and when I do make fun of someone or something, it has to be so precise so it doesn't become a caricature. It has to be so precise. Because when you do your homework and it's precise, then people like it because they feel like he, did, he actually did his work. You know? And I did that when I did that in France and I make fun of the French, they understand it like, okay, he actually knows us really well. It's one of the biggest compliments I like getting is when someone comes up to me after the show and goes, I laughed, I really loved it, but how do you know us so well? I love that. I think for me, it's it's a sign that you've done your homework as a comedian. I think you need to be precise because if you don't, then it definitely falls into caricature. And that was one of the problems with the uh, the whole Apu debate, debate, right? It was such a caricature that be, obviously some people took it to be offensive. Whereas like you look at someone like Peter Sellers when he did The Party in 1969. I watched that movie you know, and I was watching it going, I was hesitant to watch because I thought, man, I'm going to be offended. It's a white guy playing an Indian guy. But he was so spot on. It reminded me, I thought I was watching one of my uncles. It's like, with the mannerism. so yeah. surreal and outlandish that I feel like you could even be like, he's not even really playing an Indian guy. He's just playing something crazy right you now. You forget that it's a white guy. Yeah. That's, that's how good he was. So it's like, to me, that, that lends itself to, like, if you do your homework... If you if if it's a tribute to a certain culture, then it works. But if it's a caricature, that's when people get offended. So you gotta that's the thing, you gotta do your homework even more. And today in today's sensitive environment, I feel like for us as comedians, it's a big challenge because you've gotta be an even better writer. Well, it's so interesting. People go Oftentimes I hear comedians say people are too sensitive. Audiences are too sensitive. And I don't necessarily see that. I see audiences are sensitive to bad jokes. Exactly. Audiences are sensitive to generalizing and stereotypes. But comedy has always been good when it's detailed. Yeah. The best comedy is detailed. I think um, today's audience is uh, probably savvier. And, and they, they're more demanding. They grew up with stand-up. They yeah. grew up with The Simpsons. They yeah. grew up with some of the best comedy writing no. there's ever been. Yeah, so they're more demanding. They want you to be better than that, you know? And that I like because it's a challenge. As a, as a writer, you're like, okay, I've got to be so good at this, especially if it's racy, especially if someone could be offended. I'd like them to think that they will be but that they won't, they come out laughing. And that's what I liked about Peter Sellers. You know, that's why I feel like that, that, that's a really good example. You've just got to do your homework a little bit more and you've got to be more detailed and uh, you've got to care more about the, the person party. that you're making fun of. 